Alright boys, I'm just checking to see if we're actually live. Just give me a wee second. Just D live sometimes takes a second to warm up. And yeah, it looks like it's actually working, so that's nice. Cool, dude. Well, I'm ready to go when you are. Everything looks good. Let me just close the D Live link. Tweet that out. Good to go. Um, all right, sweet. Hello, Mr. Dankula. How's it going? Yeah, yeah. Things are fine. How are you? They're all right. They're all right. I guess uh, you want to get right down the brass tacks, I take it? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, someone uh, sent me a clip of you talking on stream, and uh, the stuff you were saying was just completely untrue. Mm -hmm. And I was just wanting to talk to you about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so and uh, you know, I I came on your uh, came on your stream. I'm, I'm greased up for the occasion. I'm ready to uh, you know slide down the aisles. So, uh, I think. Can we touch on that as well as other things? Or is that the only thing you're going to talk to me about? Uh, possibly can touch on other things. Possibly. Depends what... Okay. Depends what kind of, kind of mood I'm in. But the first thing I want to talk about is uh, what you said. You said, yeah, do you remember when he ran for UKIP and completely derailed and tanked their entire organization? Uh, yeah, that was great. Yeah, it's also a complete fucking lie. <laughs> That's not what happened at all. All right, well, here we are. Okay. Um, so uh, I guess I can start out by saying that, uh, yeah, I will say on the record right now that I'm I'm willing to offer uh, an apology to your audience because I think that's very important. Um, but I mean, I'd like to I'd like to get there eventually. Before we get to that moment, I was hoping we could just do maybe a little bit of like a little edging before full release. That's probably the best way to go about these things, right? I mean, we should go down a little bit about the history of, of, of UKIP, your participation in there. Maybe the history of uh, you know the political party in general and your involvement, because I, I do have a lot of questions. I mean, you could educate me on a whole host of topics. Yeah, especially when it comes to like Nigel Farage, for example. Yeah, um, I can tell you exactly why the party tanked. I could even give you the entire timeline of all the events that happened and led up to it. Sure, please. Well, basically, UKIP was already tumultuous as all hell. I mean, they were going through leader after leader after leader because nobody was lasting more than like a few months or someone would get in and then uh, start some sort of controversy that would cause shit for the party, like Henry Bolton as well. Then after that, I ended up, it became uh, Gerard Batten. Now, well, the reason that you kept, I should start with Brexit in itself. Nigel Farage was Mr. Brexit. He was the face of Brexit. He was the guy that started it all. He was the guy that got the vote and started everything and got the ball rolling and uh, so he was seen as the face of Brexit, the face of UKIP. He wasn't just the leader of the party, he ended up becoming the party's brand, he ended up becoming the face of the actual argument of Brexit itself. And then after the vote went through, Brexit vote won, Nigel Farage just went like, yeah, cool, I've, my, my work here is done and all but rode off into the sunset. He was still a member of the party, still an MEP, still collecting his paycheck. But he was literally just there in spirit. Like, he wasn't doing anything, he wasn't contributing, he was still, his brand was still attached to the party, but he, he just wasn't doing anything. I, I think he felt just, I have accomplished Brexit, my work here is done, and then just didn't do anything after that. Ended up, he stepped down as leader, uh, lots and lots of people tried to come in and fill those boots and that was a complete shit show with, you know, different leader after different leader, controversy, leader stepped down, new leader got voted in, new acting leader, it was a complete shit show. Then uh, Gerald Batten came in, shook the party up, he has a bit of an iron grip and he actually managed to develop the party into, you know, something stable again. So this is this all happens long, long, long before me and Sargon, like, came anywhere near the party. So it was already a little bit of a shit show uh, before we even came in. Then we were looking at a party that actually has free speech clauses in its manifesto that actually cared about freedom of speech. 
Uh, none of the other major parties do that have any kind of clout. The only one was UKIP. We ended up joining UKIP. They were very happy with us, welcomed us with open arms. Even Farage was quite happy with it. I mean, we even met him at the European Parliament. We were chatting away to Farage, but as soon as we got in the door, we realised that there's a lot of factional warfare within UKIP. There's a lot of, everyone has their own little team and everything. For example, the nickname for Batten's people was called the Batten Brigade. And uh, everything was fine. Everything was going smoothly. Um, there was obviously bad press, but you kept literally just gets a constant fucking stream of bad press. That's why everyone's saying, "Yo, you brought the you brought the party bad press." Oh yeah, because you kept never ever had bad press before. They don't get slated in the papers constantly. And then what happened was the concept of uh, Tommy Robinson being brought on as a member was brought up. Now there were rules in the UKIP charter that anyone who was an ex-member of the EDL or an ex-member of the BNP uh, is not allowed to join UKIP. They're banned from joining. Now, uh, other political parties don't have that rule. Only UKIP has that rule. I mean, Labour themselves have ex-BNP members and even have some ex-BNP councillors, but that's by the by. But ended up, I, I said, like, we should put it to a vote. We shouldn't just say, tough shit, we're going to bend the rules to allow Tommy in. I said, put it to a vote. It ended up that uh, the vote kept getting delayed because, again, in a party politics, a lot of people didn't want Tommy in and they were using their power to stop the vote from happening. And so, basically, we were like, you're kind of fucking up democracy here. Like, just if anybody wants him in, then they can vote for it or vote against it. Just let let everyone in the party decide. They kept putting off the poll, kept, kept delaying the vote, and then it ended up, Batten just went, OK, he's not going to be a member, but I'm going to bring him on as an advisor. Right, and then... Everything kicked off, everything blew up, everyone got really mad, and uh, Nigel Farage went, fuck this, I'm leaving, and acted like, that. oh, that's the final straw, I'm gone, when that wasn't what happened. See how the Brexit party that he went on to form, he had been planning that for months, he had been planning that for a really long time, he just used the Tommy Robinson thing as an excuse to go and do it. Right, yeah. so... Right, so like we could dig through the ditches, sprint through the witches and all that kind of stuff, but like when it comes to a Dinkula, uh in the two points that you made in that tweet, one of the two says that it happens to do with Game of Thrones esque scenario. So did you mean that there was some kind of incest going on? Was there something between like Boris Johnson or Nigel Farage or what exactly does that mean? Um it's just basically everyone was vying for power. Everybody wanted a seat at the table. Literally Game of Thrones. People were fighting for the throne. That's literally what it was. Like, it was just factionalism and, you know, anyone, you know... If, Charging battery. If the person who's, you know... If they were all in the Batten Brigade, if Batten was in charge, then his little brigade, you know, felt in charge and felt important within the party. You know, basically, the Lord, you know, the Lord became king and his subjects were held in higher regard than the other subjects. It was that that type of fucking bullshit. That, that's, that's what it was. <laughs> but so it didn't collapse due to, like, any sea fuckery, right? It, the previous leader, Farage, I, stated I, that the Brexit was, Party consolidated their uh, entire vote share and then some, right? I was, I was about to get on to the NEC. <laughs> Right, basically, uh, Farage jumped ship, went away and formed the Brexit party, and this was something that had been months in the making because he'd, he'd kind of lost control. Like, a lot of people lost a lot of respect for Farage because basically, like, from everybody I spoke to in the party, I was like, ah, like, what, what, what is actually going on with him? And the unanimous, you know, opinion I was getting from everyone was he just doesn't care anymore. Like, he, he genuinely feels, I got Brexit, that's it, it's done, bye. Like, that, like, and that was it. That's why everyone was saying, like, he's he's here in spirit. Like, probably not really. He just wasn't doing anything for the party. Charging battery. Like, he was turning up. He was turning up to the fucking charge like, complete meetings and shit like that. But that was it. But then what happened after that. Farage left, and what happened is he because he was the brand, the face of yeah, Mister Brexit. Basically, when he left, everyone thought, oh, that's UKIP done, even though UKIP wasn't done. UKIP was still a fully functional party. Like, they had, like, councillors, they had MEPs, they had all that type of stuff. And when Farage left, everyone just immediately... Because, see, when people think of Brexit, they think of Farage. It wasn't UKIP. UKIP was just something Farage was a part of. So when Farage left, a huge amount of the voter base left and went with Farage, right? And then what happened was the NEC, who wanted to jump ship, a lot of people jumped ship and went to the Brexit party because they were promised, you know, nice, high, shiny positions in the party. But the, he, he left multiple times. He left, like, six times, didn't he? Yeah, but this was the, the, the big final one. Okay. 
Um, and then in terms in terms of you 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 said that you were you were part of the party because of the free speech aspect, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you were joining around the time that Tommy Robinson was too, and then there was a huge push to the far right for yeah. UKIP as a party, right? Like a large amount of Islamophobia was pretty much reported universally. No, those those Muslim members in UKIP. <laughs> that doesn't change anything, though. No. There can be Muslim members in, in an organization that discriminates. Yeah, those those self self hating Muslims that want to destroy their culture and their religion. It's weird, isn't it? Just these just these just these masochists, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 that that doesn't really change anything of what I've just said, though, right? Like it was pretty heavily reported in both UK press and international press that uh -huh. there was a huge amount of Islamophobia that was coming out of the party around that time. God damn, I, it's, a good, I, it's a good thing we know that for a fact. It's not because like, the press would never ever lie about that, would they? Okay, so is this going to be a situation where, like, if I if I have a whole bunch of sources ready for you, because you you did say you wanted me to come with like you know no, that's fine. I, I just but, I just want to I want to address the derailing part because as you can see okay. so far in this absolute derailment, I have absolutely right. no involvement at all. I have no <laughs> involvement now. After that left, basically there was people in the NEC which are like the chair, the board of UKIP. If there's any, they're like the the upper higher council of all of UKIP. They manage things like leadership elections, party decisions, the manifesto, all that type of stuff. Now, a lot of them were still very team Farage. They just didn't want to jump the ship to go to the Brexit party because they wouldn't have the, the, the wage and the recognition that they would get, you know, well-being in the NEC. And a lot of them mm -hmm. blamed Gerard Batten for Farage leaving, so they hated Gerard Batten. Right, they went, you've cost us votes, you've cost us our brand, you've cost us this, you've cost us that. Hail, hail Nigel Farage, you know that, right? So they did everything that they could to fuck with him. They blocked all kinds of decisions, blocked all kinds of votes anytime. Basically, they just went, oh, is Batten trying to do something? Stop him. Well, mm -hmm. they just fucked it up all the way through it. And eventually it got to the point where Batten just went, I can't function like this. Like, the NEC has made it impossible for me to function as a leader. I'm stepping down, right? I'm going to mm -hmm. hand it over to someone that the NEC doesn't hate so that the party can actually move forward because the NEC were just cut, cutting their own nose off to spite their face. That's what they were doing. They were fucking up the whole party just because they had this personal beef with Gerard Batten. Then we had a democratic mm -hmm. election, democratic leadership election. Richard Brain was another leader that got voted in. And he said, I want Nigel Farage, not Nigel Farage, I want Gerard Batten as my deputy. And the NEC went, no. And he went, why? I'm allowed to choose my own deputy. And they were like, well, we're, we're veto vetoing your decision. And B Richard Brain then went, well, I'm going to dismantle the NEC. Lots of, people in the, lots of the people in the party have agreed that the reason we're not moving forward is because of your fuckery. And so began the war, <laughs> right? And basically, mm -hmm. the NEC did everything they could to fuck over everything in the party. People were getting kicked out. You were getting finger men like in V for Vendetta, snitching on people and making up crap about people as an excuse to kick political rivals out the party. Like, f full on Game of Fucking Thrones shit. Until it got to the point where Richard Brain went, fuck this, I can't do it anymore. And he abdicated his leader because he couldn't do anything. And because of all this internal petty fucking fighting and losing the brand of Nigel Farage, that. You know, all the voters jumped over to the Brexit party and the internal fighting made UKIP look like an absolute shambles. And in the entirety of this, I had absolutely no part. Just a lot of people like to say that, which is why when I seen you say that statement, when I was there, I was at the meetings, I know everything that happened. Like, mm -hmm. I spoke to all the members, I know everything. That's why when I seen you say that, I just went, that's a lie. All right, so like I said, uh... I have already said at the start of this, I promised your audience an apology. We're going to get to that. But I'm just trying to figure out a couple more things. Because, again, when you said, for starters, that uh, you didn't campaign for them, right, is one of the things you said? Yeah, I think I, I think the most I ever did was I mentioned in a video that I was fourth in the list. And then I made some joke saying, all, all we need is 80% of the people in Scotland to vote for UKIP. Totally doable, like, being sarcastic, mm -hmm. clearly. Right, so I've got a link to a video from your channel where it says UKIP needs you, and it's a commercial you've produced where you're talking about recruiting new youth members to UKIP, and then you you make uh, an anti-Semitic joke at the end of it. But I'm gonna I'm gonna say it just right at the beginning of this because I, I, I know I, I, it's gonna be hard to pin down any 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 of these no, jokes because you're definitely just, an individual. I just, I just want to ask. I just want to ask. Right, see that yeah, video yeah. that you're referencing to? That is mm -hmm. when I first joined UKIP. That was. Sure. Month, that was months and months and months and months. That was a very long time before I, I even. <laughs> it makes I, no, no, you're, you're it saying, makes you're, no saying difference, though, you're saying that that's part of like my campaign. That my I didn't even know I was going to be an MEP. I had no expectation 
of that ever happening. That's right. totally fine. You still made a campaign video for them. A, camp right? My dude, a campaign you can't, like, video? That. There, there was no campaign. The, the name of the video is UKIP Needs You. Yeah. That's, that's that, the name of the video. Okay, yeah. okay, campaign. What election? What election was that for? It, it doesn't matter if it's for an election. You're still campaigning for UKIP. Like, you can't you can't say the sentence, dude, I don't campaign dude, for UKIP, dude, or I never campaigned for UKIP, dude, even if it was part of your political party, you, right? You campaigned for elections, man. Absolutely. Campaign for elections. Oh, right? no there question. Was... No <laughs> question. If, if, if I myself, though, put out an ad right now that says, hey, by the way, you should vote for the NDP. Here's why. I would say that I was working on behalf of the NDP, right? I'm producing propaganda for them in some sense. Okay. At the same time, you're doing this. Okay, then. I, 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 in my understanding, when you say my political campaign, I thought you meant my MEP election. Well, okay, I can get to that because we have another video for that as well. But anyways, in the UKIP Needs You video, because we'll start with that one, right? Yeah, the anti-Semitic um, anti joke at the end, I especially love that part. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know. I, yeah, hey, I... Love I that. <laughs> all right, mate, I'm... I am a comedian as well. I am not going to, like, or at least I want to be, okay? So you can call me, like, a wannabe dumpster fire comedian. That's totally fine. So I don't want to sit here and then the two of us are going to go back and forth as to what or is what not funny because I don't think any two people who consider themselves comedians want to ever try and do that, right? So I'm not going to say, hey, by the way, it's it's distasteful for me that you're making fun of, like, you know, Jewish people like that. That's, can I, can you know, I, that's your I, thing. That's, can, can I just that's, say, that's can, your stick, right? Can I say one thing, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, 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 please. The guy that handed me the bag of shekels is Jewish. Yes. And that was okay. that was a literal bag of shekels that he brought with him from Israel when he came over mm -hmm. to visit, and he handed it to me like laughing, going, "Here's your Mossad money, Goyim, and all that, right?" And making fun of me and shit like that. Like that, that was part of it. In fact, I think it was. I think the joke was actually his idea, right? So fair enough. But like yeah. that's that's kind of the I have a black friend argument, right? Like I can't be racist because I have a black buddy, or like you okay, know, I, I have I, a Jewish but, friend. So but the, but the good thing about that is, like, I know lots of people are like, oh, you're racist, you're fascist, that joke was anti-Semitic. I, I don't care. I don't care what you think. I know what I meant. I know what my intent was. And I know I know better sure. than to try and convince people that want to push a narrative otherwise. Sure. And again, dude, I'm not here to talk to you about that because, like, that's not my thing. I'm, I'm not going to be – I'm not a joke police kind of person, right? And, yeah. again, whether or not I find it funny or I don't find it funny, that's up to someone else, right? Humor is subjective. Okay. But in, in a political ad, putting something like that in there, right, obviously – if it's going to be on the internet, that's different than private speech, right? That's different than you telling that joke to your Jewish friend, being like, hey, by the way, those shekels are hilarious. This is you making that video and then putting it onto the internet and then representing a political party as a result of that at the same time. Yeah. So? Well, then that would directly affect UKIP if they, in turn, down the road, were to take you on as an MEP, no? No, it didn't actually affect them at all. I mean, a, a, couple, of people so, got, a, so then, a couple of people got pissy about the joke. That, that was it, really. mm -hmm. Right. And then so then why would Nigel Farage, when asked multiple times in different TV interviews, disown both you and Sargon based on those kind of jokes and humor, whether it be the rape joke or the Jewish joke, for example? Was he asked about that in interviews? He was, yeah. All right. I don't remember that. Did he, did he disavow us? Yeah, he did. Yeah. All right. OK. So he, he called you the lunatic slash criminal fringe. Us directly or Tommy Robinson? Um, Sargon, that's him referencing Sargon and Count Dankula. Really? Oh well, that's the first. Yeah, I'll pull, I'll pull this up for you. That's the first I've ever heard of that. He was he was actually very happy about us joining the party. But probably at first, right? And then it came down the road that all that rape stuff came out with with Carl Benjamin, and then yeah, the other that, jokes came out as I well. Thought that was funny. They, they they dug up controversy that was like two years old. At that point, the the rape, the rape. Do you mean the you mean the non-rape, the non-rape threat? Yeah, the the, the Sargon's like non-stop rape, rape joke kind of stuff. The non the non-rape joke, you mean? Well, yeah, the, the rape joke. It was the the non-rape. The, non, rape. the, non -rape joke. the, the <laughs> I wouldn't even rape her joke. That that one, right? Yeah, I thought that was funny. saying that she's she's too ugly to even be raped. That one, right? It's, no, it's still a rape well, joke by definition. I'm not saying. I'm, about... I'm not saying. Who, who says who says she's ugly? You've, you've pulled that up yourself. I mean, I wouldn't even rape someone. Am I calling them ugly? No, I'm just saying I wouldn't do such a terrible thing. But that's still considered a rape joke. You understand that, right? It's a non-rape joke. Okay. <laughs> This is this is the weirdest semantics argument I've ever been inside me. I'm just saying. Um, I'm just saying. I just like to make sure that everything, you know, all, all all the conversation is framed properly. That's all. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Well, okay. This is a, a new line of pedantry I didn't think we'd experience. Let's uh, <laughs> so let, let, let's let's get down to to brass tacks in here. So you you made you made offensive jokes. You came out all all this stuff. Uh, 
single-handedly though one individual being able to tank an entire political party probably not too realistic right not too realistic i don't know if i don't know if fucking what's his face why have i forgotten his name peter griffin he fucking annihilated oh, family guy no no peter griffin holy <laughs> shit no and for well, in fact i should call him that because he kind of looks like peter griffin that's had a stroke uh nick griffin leader of the bnp he did an appearance on a uh, bbc question time and uh, this is why everyone goes like that. Oh, you, you joined UKIP, you joined the fascist party. I mean, if I wanted to join a fascist party, I would have joined the fucking BNP. Jesus. Mm. Yeah, the, the, he's like, Nick Griffin is like... See how, see how you get the people that turn around and go like, I'm not, I'm not racist, I'm not this, I'm not that, and everything. No, no, Nick Griffin will look you in the eye and tell you the Holocaust didn't happen, I hate gays, like, that. that's the type he is. He's like unapologetically unironically a very big fan of oswald mosley right so that, that's what that's sure what, yeah and that's 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 horrifying but that's that's those are the kind of people that are really easy for like you know someone to say hey point at them and be like that's a racist that guy uses the n-word he's a racist right because he hates black people and uses those kind of terms uh -huh. there's many forms of it though like racism systemic right so even like putting stuff out there that could you know marginalize people for example whether it's a joke or something else that can also oppress people even if you're not intending like even if your intent in your heart right. isn't like i necessarily hate jewish people how, when I make this how, joke, right? how how do jokes oppress people? How do jokes oppress people? Yes. Like a single joke, say the shekels joke, for example. Uh huh. So if they add to an atmosphere that directly marginalizes the community, right? Okay. If you are a community, say like the Jewish people who how, have undergone how, horrific how, atrocities how, under the Holocaust. How do jokes marginalize people? How do they marginalize people? They contribute to a societal atmosphere uh -huh. that may make them feel more afraid, right? Every single day you leave your house how and do, you happen to not do, be white. How do jokes make people feel afraid? Uh, I feel like I'm explaining the same thing over to you over and over. No, I mean, you're if not, you want to break no, down oh, things oh, of their simplicity, oh, we should get to that, right? No, I, I, I definitely, this is something that I care very deeply about and I would love to dive I know, as I, deep into it as we can go. How do jokes okay, make people feel afraid? Okay, here's, here's, here's the best way I can explain it to you, all right? Your, what you're famous for is basically starting, uh, what is it, like a little Nazi count for dogs kind of thing, right? Like that was the joke? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll say this and I'll be totally candid. I don't think in your heart of hearts you were doing any of that as some kind of like hilarious way to make fun of the Jewish people, uh, to make them feel scared or afraid or remind them of the Holocaust. You were doing it strictly because you thought it was hilarious if your joke uh, to your dog, it was your girlfriend's dog, right? If your girlfriend's dog basically did the Nazi salute and you thought of the worst possible thing that you could think of to turn this cute little pug into, that was the Nazi. And by doing that, it's fucking hilarious because the Nazi all of a sudden responds to like you know certain like anti-Semitic catchphrases, and now he's a horrifying creature, right? That was that was the end. Like that's the bit. Yep, yeah, that's that's pretty much the joke. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think in your heart of hearts you were necessarily doing that because you wanted to further like you know a white ethno state or you know bring forth the Third Reich. I don't think you were doing it because you had anything. I thought you did it because you thought it would be just a laugh, right? And the yeah. blowback from it was pretty extreme. So because of that. I don't know if that's what started your timeline from being like a communist to a full blown like you know right winger. I don't know if that was the reason for it, but that's that was part of the arc, right? It was sort of it was that was sort of like the last nail in the coffin. There's a whole there's a whole explanation about how I ended up veering away from that path. Um, that's a fucking long story, but that was it was something that was already going to happen, but it was just that situation was the impetus for for it finally happening. Okay, so in, in that case, right, even if your heart's not in the wrong place, your intent was not to try and make, you know, uh, Jewish people feel more afraid or contribute to, you know, uh, societal stigma, stigmatization of the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. You have to understand historically, one of the big reasons after World War II why a lot of things suddenly became banned in Germany, such as like, you know, using uh, Nazi symbolism or selling uh, Mein Kampf, stuff like that, was because they weren't trying to erase history. Those things are still available in uh, museums uh, and, you know, if you're trying to study it like that. But to be able to just use them openly, they, they would feel that that contributes to something called hate speech. And the purpose behind that being is that even if it's a joke, it can still marginalize communities and members because not everyone will take it as a joke like you did. How not everyone will think of it as, as being okay. hilarious. But but how does it marginalize people? Are you asking, like, quite literally, do they hear that joke and they suddenly feel marginalized? No, I'm, I'm asking, like, you say... Okay, here's the, best way, here's the best way I can explain yeah. to you. It's part of dehumanization, all right? It's the okay. same problem with slavery in the United States, right? When you turn... 
uh, uh, African Americans Joe, Joe, into character into characters, right? In, into like minstrel shows, into like blackface stuff like that. It's to make them seem less human, that they're cartoon characters to you. So the same thing occurs with that kind of humor. Okay, so we should exclude them from an extremely important social interaction, which is comedy and jokes. I think that's dehumanizing. Uh, you don't have to exclude them at all, not what none whatsoever. Okay, then it's just the you know. Is is the of, only lot... kind of joke you can do towards another individual though, who's other race? Does that happen? Does it have to be degrading to them? Does it have to dehumanize them? Is that the only way to do it? Most type, most types of mockery are. That's part of comedy. I think if you mm -hmm. exclude someone from that, you are othering them. You are doing that. If you tell people you're not allowed to joke about these people, they are not allowed to be part of this very important social interaction, which is mockery and everything. It depends on what it is. Like, for example, okay, I, don't, but we, I, don't, okay. I don't do it in bad faith because I actually hate these people and I want them to go home and cry about it. And I would much rather right. that they laughed. But it's the fact is, like, see if I turn, like, I make jokes about fucking anything and everything, right? I, I get in the papers a lot for fucking jokes that I make sure. that piss people off. Right, but everybody fucking gets it. Like, I do it against fucking black people, white people, Jews, like, gays, trans. I do it against absolutely everyone. Nobody's safe with me. I don't focus on a specific group overall. But I think if I said, I'm not going to jo joke about X group, that is me excluding them. I'm saying, oh, this social interaction that humans universally share, you're not allowed to be a part of it. I think that's othering them. I think that's marginalizing them. So, okay, so there's a handful of really important things you got to remember, though. Are, a, are you doing these jokes with your friends or your buddies? Or are you doing them on public atmosphere, like, you know, on Both. public forums? Both. Both. So yeah. it doesn't matter how loud the broadcast is. Like, you have a huge platform. So if you put out a racist joke about black people as, a, you know, a video, it's going to be seen by sometimes millions of people, right? Depend what the joke is. Sure. Like, but, like, I you would, understand that, like, right? Like, you have a bigger megaphone than most people would. And you can you can discern True. the difference between that, right? True. Being able and to I've, tell and, a joke and, and, and one that might actually affect, you know, again, millions of people by I, the power of your voice. Okay, but the problem is, right, think of the Nazi pug video. In the Nazi pug video, I was literally saying the phrase, gas the Jews, right? Now, out of all the jokes that I've made and all the things I've said on stage and the things that I have done, that joke by far is the spiciest because I say something which in many different contexts could be considered a direct incitement to violence okay how many jews were harmed because of that video and that was the that was the joke that did the rounds millions of people all around the world seen that how many jews were harmed because of that video uh it would be really hard for me to give you data on that do i think that there's one person out there who might have been inspired by that could be i can't say right i i don't like to talk don't, about I things don't, i don't have I, empirical I, data on I, I, I don't to assume that. that it was zero is the same problem right you can't assume that not um, a single person saw that and then thought you know what maybe it's funny for me to say this kind okay, of shit okay. i'm gonna say it all the time no right nobody, nobody nobody has been inspired to commit a physical attack against jewish people because of my video Right. Uh, people get... have been inspired to shoot up mosques because they saw Ben Shapiro. And one of the shooters in the Quebec mosque shooting directly said that it was Ben Shapiro's work that inspired him. So there is direct correlation to his actions. Okay. Did, did, did Ben Shapiro tell him to shoot up a mosque? No, not directly. But did, the person did, said what he was saying. Did they inspired all, did, him, right? did, 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 so you did, have to, by virtue say... of that, you have to understand that your platform can affect people. That's very important, obviously. Did the author of Catcher in the Rye want one of his readers to murder John Lennon. <laughs> that's a good one. I like that. Yeah, uh, but, that, no, but, that but that's the thing. You have absolutely right. no control whatsoever. But there's a big difference not. between Catcher in the Rye. There's a difference between me saying right now, Count Dankula, uh, you've got a fuzzy beard, and that inspiring someone to go have sex with a monkey, right? Uh -huh. That would be a strange correlation. That doesn't make very sense. If I told you, by the way, this group of people, I'm going to marginalize them, and I think I'm going to vilify them because they're very, very evil for some certain reason, and then a person sees that and is like, I agree with you. I'm now going to commit violence. There's okay, a huge well, difference that, there. Yeah, yeah there's a there, there's also a huge fucking jump there against what that person intends to do and the words that right and that was your example you just used catcher in the rye right to yes. say john lennon shot someone because they read it that yeah. makes no sense to me obviously i agree with you there's no correlation there okay, someone can read a menu yeah. at like kfc and be like oh shit now i want to shoot at the school okay, the, there's no correlation so, there so see right? so see if there is a particular group of people then are we not allowed mm -hmm. to point out flaws or criticize them or anything just in case the hatred for this group of people gets so much that even though no violence has been called for, a person may, of their own free will, decide on their own to inflict violence upon them.
Because if that's the, uh, if that's the case, then you're out of a job. You're out of a job. You're not going to be able to complain about the right wing. That's, that's why I, I started. I, I start, like. like I said, I started this by saying to you, like I am not someone who's against free speech. I'm totally for free speech within the limits that our society dictates. Right? There's a difference between free speech, hate speech, and there's a difference between me telling a joke and also telling jokes for the memes and also telling jokes because I want to indoctrinate people and I just want to keep doing it until it normalizes hateful behavior. There's I don't, a big that, difference that, between all of those. That's, that's the thing that I've never understood. Everyone goes like, "Oh, you tell jokes." to indoctrinate people it convinces people to your their, your way of thinking and i've like i literally do this for a living and i don't fucking see that i don't mm -hmm. see it i've never experienced it i mean see if you tell a joke and there's people in the crowd that don't agree with your joke holy fucking shit do they let you know like i mean if i go on if i go on twitter or on youtube right now and i make some fucking spicy jokes if people don't like it good lord they will let you know in a fucking instant, usually with a lot of disparaging, horrible, hateful comments against you. Right? See, the only people that I see, like, sort of, see, for example, if I went on stage and went, haha, black people, right? And everyone started clapping. I've not convinced them of shit, right? This was just something that they already believed. Jokes aren't, like, a way to fucking convince people to your way of thinking. You might get people to agree with the subject matter, but it doesn't convince anyone it might not it maybe not for you count ankula because like you're not actively trying to recruit people into some strange ethno state there are definitely people who have said you know multiple times okay. yes they no, use this recruitment yeah, tool yes, there's, there's, there's a big difference between the two there absolutely is people who say they do that there are also people that say that they use crystals to heal fucking cuts and rashes what i'm saying is just because you say you do it doesn't mean it works I know, but again, you're taking extreme, isolated examples and trying to use them as a generality, and that's false, right? In the okay. in the case of like alt right at recruitment, especially when it comes to the internet, they have said demonstrably multiple times that they use that humor as a recruitment tool. It's it's not isolated okay. incidents. For okay, example. then I'm saying it doesn't work. <laughs> it's ineffective. Well, I mean, fuck. I wish you were right. Unfortunately, like the stats don't bear out on that. No, because see, if you actually speak to the alt right, like I do, because I think it's good to get a better understanding. Because one of the people that I actually thoroughly fucking enjoy and I believe that more and more people should follow his work is Daryl Davis Daryl Davis is an absolute fucking champion that has proven that dialogue with these people actually does work it actually does work and it actually is effective so see how these people if you want to actually understand why do you think and feel the way you do actually sit down and talk to them because none of them have said um, I seen a Pepe meme on Twitter, and then I decided that Jews are bad. Like, no, mm -hmm. none, none of them will I, say that to you. Not a single one will say that to you. Again, they laugh at those memes and they enjoy the memes and everything. But all it, the reason that they enjoy it is because it already reaffirms what they believe. It doesn't convince them, right? It's basically right, going. So to, it's basically if I go on stage and say, "Pedophiles are bad," the whole crowd's <laughs> going to fucking clap. Right, I've not fucking yeah, convinced course. anyone of anything. I've so, just said. So, so what you're giving an example with. of is yeah. is in group versus out group dynamics, right? And in the case of the alt right, I agree with you. If you were able to actually talk to some alt writers, especially young kids, and tell them, "Hey, here's a good way to de-radicalize yourself and get out of this," most of them probably wouldn't tell you that. Like, I deep down in my soul genuinely hate the Jewish people. I've kind of maybe been taught that there's this difference in IQs and brain weights and all this kind of race realism bullshit, and it's because of that that I feel that way. And yes, maybe reaching up to that on the other side of the aisle is a good idea in terms of being a comedian though in terms of you saying pedophiles are bad again you are talking to an in-group right like i don't know how many of no, your friends no, no, are, no, no, are not in some of the clubs that are performing trust me okay I, sure I, but I, you're, you're giving again that have been very divided i've been booed before for some of the sure. fucking jokes i've said sure but that that again that's these are isolated examples right so uh, like in your own group of friends like how many of them are non-white for your close friends and how and as long as you've been growing up how long have they been non-white well, Scotland is 96% white. Right. So, yeah. and again, I'm not saying this to call you out. I could tell you the same thing. But Me, I do, I for do, example, when I, I was... I do I do have friends. Like, I have black friends. I have Asian friends. I just don't see why that matters. Well, so. it matters because if you were constantly uh, talking to a majority of white friends and you're joking amongst your white friends, right? And it's totally fine for these jokes amongst your white friends because at the end of the day, you don't think that these actually have any real harm. They're just jokes. And it's just hilarious to all of you to keep making jokes against black people. That's, right, but that's whatever, the thing right? is, this is the thing is, you, you keep repeatedly saying that they have harm. I'm, I'm, I'm wanting you to explain how 
How does right, so this, this was going to be a direct example of that. Yeah. In, in amongst your white friends, you're making jokes about black people, and it's all good, it's all fun, it's all hilarious, right? Okay. And that's because you don't actually have any experience with an outside group. So the idea of dehumanizing those kind of people doesn't really affect you or your I other don't, friends. I don't They're de- just jokes. I don't dehumanize them. Jokes about people don't dehumanize them. Right, but your intent is not to dehumanize them. When you say those jokes, you might not in your heart of hearts say, I want to make you feel shitty okay, or okay. I want to make you feel like less of a person. Dude. But the effect, the effect is very, very okay. different. And that's the key. That's okay, what's important. Okay, dude, I think I think that's I think that says more about you personally. Whenever I hear jokes about certain groups of people, I don't think, ha ha ha, I suddenly think they are less than human. I just think I heard a funny joke. I don't think anything Exactly. Right, I don't that's, think that's any, the point. That's the point. Less. Right. Right. To you, to you in your own head, you're like, this isn't dehumanizing. I don't get it. I just think it's funny. Right? You can't right. put yourself in their shoes for two okay, seconds. Dude, you can't put yourself well, in that other person's shoes. It, it would be very different to yeah, them, for, yeah, but even, for example. But even one thing that has been... No, I, I can definitely put you put them in my, put myself in their shoes, right? Because Scottish people have been made fun of for fucking decades, right? All throughout comedy. And also, I'm a Catholic in Scotland. I've been called a fiend and a tag and everything many, many times in my life. And I've heard all the anti-Catholic jokes, all the anti-Irish jokes getting called fucking Sassanats, getting called Chukters, getting all of that shit, right? Whenever I hear those jokes, I don't feel dehumanised because it's said in friendly, banterous ways and I understand that the intent of it is comedy. I don't see it as coming from a place of hatred or anything of like course, that. Of course, of right. course. But you're, you're, you're going back in circles, man. That's, that's the exact same thing. It doesn't affect you, and for the exact same reason, because that exactly isn't exactly a societal, structural... Uh, class that's being oppressed in the same way. No. So oh, someone, oh, oh, someone oh, 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 hold on, hold yeah, on, yeah, yeah, hold yeah. on. Ca- no, stay ca- on this. Ca- stay on this. Ca- this is good. Ca- Catholics, Catholics were not oppressed in Scotland. Oh no, 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 no! no. We're, we're talking about race right now, my friend. Ethnicity and race, right? This right, is different. Okay. Not, not religious oppression. And right. and you, even to, in today's day and age, if you walk around your society, I'm I'm guessing you probably don't feel discrimination based on your religion. It's probably pretty secular now. No, right? That that stuff is still very fucking alive and well. Sectarian, okay, sectarian, so if it's sectarian. alive and yeah. if it's alive and well, like we, we, is it we, something? We, we is it something? Hold on, hold on. This is very, very important. Is it something that if you walk outside of your door, someone could look at you, point at you, and be like, "He's a Catholic." No, they'll know it right when they see you. No, of but course I'm... not. Of course not. That's the difference for a lot of these people, especially when it comes to say African Americans. They walk outside of the house. That's how the entire world will judge them all the time, based on the amount of melanin in their fucking skin. So okay. that's why it's a lot more fucked up. That's what systemic racism has to do. Right. Okay. So that's so, why if you're, stop, so basically, if you're someone who's so basically my because my differences are hidden, they don't they don't result in as much as much you know syst- systemic racism and hate speech and dehumanization and derogatory remarks. Mm-hmm. Is that it? Right. Okay. Well, that's that's <laughs> why certain certain jokes would affect certain people. You're saying how does how does a joke actually affect anyone, right? Uh-huh. And if it's someone who, like like I said, leaves their house and is already affected by racism in every single way, then perhaps yeah, hearing a joke on top of that might add one more you know okay. shitty piece to the pile. So okay then. So basically, jokes can make people feel upset. They can well. They can do lots of things. They can make people feel happy. They can dehumanize people. Okay, but, I mean, but you, but you, but you the, said, the intent doesn't always matter. Okay, but you said that basically the reason that we should be aware and mindful of the of the jokes that we tell is someone might be going through some shit. They've suffered a lot of shit, and then a joke might make them feel upset. Uh, it could also contribute to an atmosphere that normalizes dehumanizing a particular group, okay. and that might, uh, might yeah. that also, if we how, take it to its how, logical extreme, how, how okay, sorry. does it? dehumanize <laughs> like that's oh that's that's the part i don't like this this is the thing is it's just i don't understand this fucking like like it's like the fucking dungeons you and dragons so close. dungeons and dragons so close. No, i thought i no, saw it no I, thought I saw the light enter your eyes and I was, no it's, it? it's, it's because the, <laughs> see the reason the way i feel right now is i'm arguing with an 80 year old who's telling me rap music causes crime marilyn manson causes kids to shoot up schools don't play grand theft auto it'll make you kill your family dungeons and dragons causes devil worship jokes cause genocide <laughs> like fucking hell man like honestly like that's these are these are boomer level fucking arguments man and I, I, i'm literally working comedy i experience this shit i don't see it i don't see it have you never have you maybe thought that just and you're i'm not trying to be mean right i'm trying usually whenever i do this shit i'm i'm an asshole right but i'm not trying to be mean have you ever thought 
that this may no, be... No, you've, you've been very nice. I agree with you. But have you ever thought that it might be because your side is well, very well known for being really sensitive? I, I've, I told you at the start of this, I'm not a joke police. I think you no, should have the right to say no, whatever you want within the boundaries I, of the law I, I don't in mean, free speech. I don't mean you personally, but... Then you're, talking since, about, you're talking about social justice warriors and, and soy boys and, and cucks I, and all that I, shit, I, right? I, I, try and not, I try and not use the social justice warrior thing anyway. That, that phrase kind of like died in 2017, right? So, sure, well, yeah. whatever, whatever you have, right? You're talking yeah. about lefties. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. So has, you're saying, you're saying to, that the problem is, is the not, problem not, is that not they're lefties, sensitive. Not lefties. There are, there are a lot of of lefties, I would say the vast majority of lefties who are sensible and absolutely normal and absolutely rational people, and then and then you get the lefties saying uh, that man asked me for my phone number, that's rape. Like you get <laughs> you get those ones right, but the vast majority of lefties, I would say, are sensible, normal, rational people. It's just there's a there's a ten percent among you that are uh, little screeching retards, to put it put it bluntly. Okay, yeah. um, well uh, then, we've got, why did you we've, call we've, me we've, out for something I, for something I said? Does doesn't it just show that you were upset by something I said? No, it's just lies. That, like, see, see if you see if you okay. see, see if you okay. did, right, see if you did a stream basically saying, Count Dankula is a great big fat ugly fuck. He looks like fat bastard from fucking. I would have just probably laughed. I mean, Vice Vice just wrote an article about me saying whether or not you should have sex with me, and I just laughed at it because I thought that <laughs> shit was funny. And then they just made they made fun of me, right? That type of stuff, whatever, I don't care. But see if it's something that's like a lie, that's when I get pissed off. That's why if someone goes, Count Dankula isn't funny, he's an arsehole, I would probably go like, yeah, whatever, okay, that's fine. But then if someone goes, Count Dankula is a fascist, I would go, right, well, that's obviously completely not fucking true. Like that, and then that's, that's when I respond to it. So basically, if you just made fun of me and said horrible shit, I wouldn't have given a shit, I don't care. Like the same, the same okay. as the same as when you tweeted out like that picture a few seconds ago of me when I was younger, and of them like obviously try to make fun of me. It was me that posted that picture myself. I don't give a shit, <laughs> right? But like that, oh, I, I, I assume so. I posted it because it's hilarious. There's like a young communist photo of you. Yeah, I was I wasn't doing it because I thought it was going to belittle you. Oh, I thought those you, those, I, were, the, those yeah. were the days. Those were the fun days. Um, yeah. But, okay, well then let me say this because yeah. I, I I did say at the start of this I was going to apologize to your audience and so I, I will right now and honestly to any any members of your audience who were watching my stream and they thought that what I was saying uh, was a literal uh, condemnation of a man who had tanked an entire political party and that I was not being hyperbolic in any single way and that a single individual would be capable of doing such a thing well then to you I sincerely apologize because it was not my intent to be misleading to you you probably weren't familiar with my material and at the time you probably looked at it and thought well this could just be taken as something that's literal i should send it to count dankula right away and then to you mr dankula i'm not apologizing for shit son it's a fucking <laughs> joke holy shit <laughs> god damn it's like how much of a hypocrite are you dude holy shit and that's what i do that's what i do on stream yeah i like i don't think a single person is capable of thinking an entire political party holy shit like, oh, all right the all right it was it was a joke and you didn't really mean it all right okay then i get it that's fine just uh for everyone that's on a on a self stream and also on my stream watching right now, I just want you to know that self is a raging paedophile. Like he just fuck it. the boy man just fucking loves kids. I mean he there loves he loves kids, man. Looks like we got him. But don't don't worry, it's just it's just it's, <laughs> a, jo it's a joke, it's boys. Don't worry, it's just oh, a man. joke. Yeah, yeah. This, this is this is I'm fucking. A, I'm a comedian. This I'm is interview comedian. with a vampire. Yeah. It's like it's yeah. super boring and it's way too hetero. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, yeah. I got one, I got one more actually. Yeah, this is, this is like you're like talking to a breakfast cereal. That's that's probably why you're named after one. No, the, the no the fucking. I think it's I think it's with you. Like uh, it was a little bit of a deflection. Like it wasn't. The thing is the way the way you said it. It wasn't a joke. Like I know, I know jokes. Like everyone always does that. Oh, oh Count Dankula, you know was it? Was All it? Right, was it yeah. just a? So, oh, so you're the guess. arbiter of what's funny and what's not funny. I awesome. No, awesome. I never, well, no, I never said that. that. I'm just, I'm other, just, right? I'm, I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing your intent. Mm -hmm. That was all. That was all. Okay. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just guessing. Like I said, intent is different, right? Intent is going. to Okay, and well, it's just that, just like that comment. Then what was the? I'm going to do what you guys do. Then what was funny about that? What was the punchline? Explain your joke. Go on, explain, well, explain uh, I guess if a single individual had such an ego that they thought that mm. they they alone could tank a single political party outside of maybe like Richard Nixon, and then they wouldn't find that funny afterwards and say, by the way, I'd like you to correct this on record, that's pretty fucking... 
I, I find that pretty damn hilarious. No, it's just the fact. That. Well, but the fact is that you guys don't do use an awful lot of hyperbole. Like that's true. We do. Every, everything's forbidden. <laughs> no, no. no, but that's the thing is, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that it's like I know, I know what you were doing, but the whole it was I, just a joke, man. That's fine. I get it. I get it, man. It's, uh, uh, did, I mean, did, it's, did I, I, I get. It's I, happening I get, in real time right no, now. No, I know. I get it. You're, you're on stream. You've got, you've mm-hmm. got that, you've got that, you've got that pride you need to hold on to. You've got your social face that you have on. We're both right? on stream. Yeah, we're both on stream. That's <laughs> right. Oh no, yeah, I get it. I know we're both on stream. I'm here. I set it up. It was my idea, right? And I get it, man. I mean, some people. I mean, you could have done it in a tweet and went, "Okay, that statement was wrong. I'm sorry. I apologize." That would, that would have been it, man. That would have been it. But it's, but it's. I, I apologize to your yeah. audience because I think they, they deserve it. Oh, that's uh, that's as far as it goes, though, my friend. I mean, oh, no, I don't. I don't I, that's the thing is <laughs> the I, hypocrisy I, I, going I, on right now. No, is, I didn't. I didn't studied. want. No, I didn't want an apology. I never asked you for an apology. I asked you for an, a retraction. Oh. I don't give a shit about apology. You didn't hurt my feelings, right? I just didn't like the fact that you were saying lies about me. That was all. I don't think that's an unreasonable thing to want to address. Right, and then I, I did enjoy the part as well that he was asking for money all the time. You know, as part of being a politician for that campaign that I didn't even do anything for, I wasn't out in the street handing out leaflets or any of that shit. You know, canvassing doors or anything. I didn't even do any of that. I actually didn't do anything at all for my campaign. That that pissed them off a lot. But yeah, I get it. I understand. You know, it was hypocritical. That's that's fine. So, I guess I guess. Uh, I can I can say a few statements about you in future, and uh, I won't make it. I won't I won't have a punchline or anything like that. I'm just going to say some shit. Surf, surfs fucks dead animals. No, there's not going to be a punchline. You just line. did. That is that is the punchline. You just did. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fine. That's fine, man. You, yeah, 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 got me. Yeah, yeah, really got me, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, shall we uh, shall we close it for today? No, no, that's 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 fine. I mean, there's a. Do you do you know do you know have anything else that you want to say or anything like that? No, that's no. that's about it. No, you you good man? You sure? Yeah. All right. Cool. Let's uh let's do this again, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be down. I'll be down to have a chat again, so that because right. it'd be it'd be nice right. it'd be nice for all your viewers to learn what my politics actually are, so that they don't think I'm constantly goose stepping towards Poland. All right, sounds good. Cheers. Um, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure. I think he might be mad. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he's mad. He he seemed a little mad. He seemed a little mad at the end there, but uh, oh dear. I'm not sure what happened there. Oh well. Okay then. Well, uh, it's fine. He said he said that statement. I mean, I didn't didn't know he was a comedian. Didn't know he was making jokes. I mean, it's like whenever I make a joke, I obviously make it like a completely outrageous statement, and then so that people like understand that it is in fact a joke, like. Uh, like, I always try and do that. Like, see how if I say, like, he fucks animals and all that shit, like, I make the statement as outrageous as I possibly can so that people know, like, yeah, it's clearly, it's clearly a joke. But then if I, you know... He, was, he wasn't joking. I know he wasn't. <laughs> right, but it's the fact is as well. I'm not... However, I'm not going to not gonna assume the man's intent because that's, that's what happened to me during my trial. So I don't want to... I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I did ask him to explain his joke because that's what they they do that to me all the time when I make a joke and then they go explain your joke. Why is it funny? And I've seen them doing the little threads where they go, "This is what you need to do to these right wingers because it destroys them. It destroys the comedy. It destroys right wing comedy." Right? Asking someone to explain the joke destroys all comedy. <laughs> like that's true for N. Like standing up to a comedian and going, "Why is that funny? Explain why that's funny." Any joke that would ruin any joke. <laughs> like, oh fucking hell! Yeah, he didn't. He didn't do too well there. He says he wants to do it again. I'm fine with doing it again. 
and all that. I mean, it, <laughs> that was the thing I was laughing at when he did that. I ain't apologising for shit, but blah blah. And he, he thought that was his big gotcha moment, and it, <laughs> and it didn't. Uh, I think that's why he was upset. It didn't go. It didn't go as well as he thought it would. But oh well, oh well. What can you do? That was funny. Long cigarette? No, 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 no. Because I make, I make, I make this stupid mistake here whenever I'm about to do chats like these. I fucking, I smoke weed, and then I end up getting my head fried, and then I don't, and then I end up fucking up. So yeah, like uh, I've stopped doing that now. I'll probably smoke a wee bit of weed now though. I not weed, a herbal cigarette that's completely legal. But yeah. But I thanks very much for coming, guys. That was a that was a good laugh. That was a good laugh. That was good fun. Yeah, I would do it with him again. I mean, as long as it as long as it doesn't lie about me in future. But it's okay. It's okay. I mean, even though it doesn't look like a joke, it wasn't presented like a joke, it wasn't told in the tone of a joke. It was didn't have a punchline. It was presented like an actual factual statement. He was joking. I remember that. <laughs> That'll be a handy technique to use. <laughs>